do gliding, it's a surreal experience. It's on a really windy day, we can, we can just literally hover. It is a safe sport, but you know, you just really got to mind your P's and Q's and know your ability. We can come up off the ground and decide how high we want to go. We can go right, we can go left. But most of the time when we're coming off the hill, we're, you know, gravity takes us down. I was very fortunate to have one of the best kiters, literally, I think, in the world, teach me how to kite. His name is Billy Bordy. Gliding is a big step in the sport of snow kiting. Using the kite to get up the hill is a, a great access to find yourself at the top of these beautiful mountain summits. Using the kite to fly down back to the bottom is absolutely breathtaking, but there is some danger and there's some safety involved. All right, so coming into a glide, the most important thing to do, which Peter Miller's got going right here, is building speed. You see he brings the kite to the zenith, a little tiny ollie sheets in. Now that Peter's in the air, what he's really focusing on is where his kite's at above him. As I said, there's two strokes. One stroke will make lift and one stroke will make thrust. Here's a great shot of Brad Gordon about to throw a nice kite loop. Now the kite loop's a, a, a great way to stop your descent, but definitely an advanced move. You've got to time the kite loop correctly so that the loop actually stops your downward momentum, but you have to direct the loop at a point where you don't free fall to the surface. Here goes Ryan again, real nice takeoff. You see Ryan, little head check up there. We're gonna pan out and get a good shot of the kite and the rider here. And as you'll see, there's rider, he's making that acceleration stroke. Now he's signing it over, here's his braking stroke. A little acceleration stroke. Now he's making his braking stroke. It's real important that you time these strokes so that you don't just fall out of the sky here. But what it allows you to do is come in for a nice soft landing if you get your timing perfect. You'll see Ryan with a little bit of stroke here and then his braking stroke right before he lands. Boom, it's just like dropping off a three foot drop to the snow. Every kite manufacturer on the planet is gonna tell you, our kites are not made to fly with. There are paragliders and speed wings to do that. So if you're a nutball and you wanna fly 500 feet high, maybe finding some better equipment that's designed to do that is the right move for you, but using the kite to bridge that gap between paragliding and speed flying and just putzing around in the flats is an amazing experience. But do it safely. Do it on new lines. Don't do it on the best kite that you bought off of eBay that's seven years old, that the lines are frayed and have knots in them. You want new lines, new kites, new gear, new harness. All of us that fly high use some sort of a backup safety system. We use a climbing harness in conjunction with our traditional harness. We use slings that you use for rock climbing to back up our harness hooks in case the harness hooks fail. We use carabiners to lock directly into our chicken loops or directly into the center lines to take the entire quick release system out. There's a lot of high tech, innovative systems that we've sort of pioneered through gliding that most of the general public aren't aware of. A lot of kiters get confused between gliding and jumping. When you jump, and you're putting resistance in the lines, and so you're edging hard against the kite, and then, then you quickly turn the kite up as at the same time you progressively edge your board, and as the kite, as that tension releases, you go popping up in the air. Gliding is really more like paragliding. It's really a wing flying, and as you start to feel lift in the kite, sheet in and just come up off the ground. So it's quite a bit different than jumping. What I would do is I'd find a little bitty slope and then what I would do is I'd boost off of it and then come down and then what you do is you just kind of make that in increments. Best thing about gliding is it's a very progressive aspect of flying because you can get on a little tiny hill where you just build up enough speed to glide five or six feet off the ground and you can really crawl, walk, run your way into the gliding aspect of snow kiting. So you want to start off small five, six foot flights going for maybe 10, 15 meters, then step it up. If you're a skier and you're out there working on your gliding, I would definitely recommend that you start off taking off backwards. 
It gives you good kite skills in the air, and it doesn't confuse you. Most of the guys that I see skiing, learning to fly forward, and I did it myself at first, you end up pulling the bar too hard in the direction that you think is the right way. It's really the wrong way. The kite kite loops, augers you into the hillside on your back, neck, and shoulders. This is a real easy way to get hurt if the snow is a little firm. So really work on those flights backwards as a skier, same way as a snowboarder. Step your way up to it. You really need to work through what's going on as far as where you are in the air, where the ground is, and making the proper strokes between the thrust stroke and the lift stroke to have a nice soft landing. This is a real nice little hill at Strawberry Reservoir to glide off of. It's a good practice hill. You can go 10 feet high here. On a good wind day, you can go 35 or 50 foot high here. But still, good long flights anywhere from you know 30 seconds to a minute off of this hill. Matty really spotting his landing well. He's got great kite control. Just kind of glance at his kite. Little stylish grab for the camera. That's a nice little five, oh, little 720 out of that. Nice work, kite loop seven out of a glide. Beautiful trick by Matt. You use the bar pushing it away or, or cheating it in to decide how high you're gonna go or how fast you're gonna go. So it's a lot like riding on the ground except for you're in the air. It's really a wing flying through the air and so as you're going down and just catch, catching flight, you're flying just like a paraglider down to the bottom. The advantage of course is that you can do multiple flights because you have the kite to take you back up the hill. Coming soon. We're going to have the Snow Kite Masters on February 4th, 5th and 6th, 2012 right here at Skyline. Come to Skyline, Utah to see snow kiting for yourself. This event is, of course, the, the premiere. Uh, Heather and Brian Shank do an amazing job putting it on. If you've never been out here, got to make it out to the Snow Kite Masters. It is actually the premiere, the mecca. It's hands down the highlight of the snow kite season. Come join us for the 8th Annual Snow Kite Masters. It's going to be a great time as always. Friends, family, and snow and wind. Stay with the KiteSites.com series to see what Brian and Heather are planning for the 2012 Snow Kite Masters. And whenever you kite Skyline, stop at the local Snow Kite headquarters in Mount Pleasant, Utah.